Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or by PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of the show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. Socialism in the eyes of most Americans that watch one or more of the corporate mainstream media news outlets think that it's the government coming into your homes using taxes as a label maker to say that they own all your stuff, right? They, they believe that under socialism, there's, you get, there's like one doctor, right? One car mechanic, one grocer, and, and we all have to share them with our one collective family in our one two collective two bedroom homes with our one dog and one cat that we're allowed to pet once a day and that's it. <laughs> so we're allowed. Yeah, I, I don't think that that is a real government system like anywhere, but uh, I can tell you one thing for sure that, that that's not fucking socialism. <laughs> <laughs> And the real truth of it all is that it's very, very difficult to define what socialism actually is. I wish I could sit here and tell you that this is the definition of socialism. But if I did such a thing, you should turn the program off and go elsewhere. Because anybody who tells you that this is socialism is either ignorant or misleading you. Socialism has been around for 150 years. It has spread all over the world, and the end result, inevitably, is that different people mean different things by that term. Now, it's taken various different forms, and socialism itself can actually be a very nuanced idea, right? Socialism can be an economic principle, a form of government, or even a way of life. It's diverse, not just in its definition, but also in its acceptance of people from all walks of life. That's something I don't think capitalism can really say, right? This is a system that kept, wanted to keep black people enslaved and then tried to revoke bathroom access for trans people. Mm -hmm. Like it also believes that voting is for rich white landowners still. <laughs> Guys, it's 2020. No one here owns the land, man. <laughs> we rent it. Amen. That's what we do. <laughs> and all the land has already been brought up, bought up by evil corporations that are just taking their revenge on Mother Earth, who friend-zoned them about a century ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> How dare she? <laughs> How dare she not date Exxon? How dare she? <laughs> but each country practices socialism slightly differently. 
Look, capitalism is what we call the economy in the United States. It's also what the leaders of Saudi Arabia call their economic system. And it's also what the people in Ireland call theirs, and it's also what the people in Nigeria call theirs. Therefore, it obviously means different things to different people. Look, it's, it's kind of like playing the guitar, right? Like you can play jazz or rock and roll, or if you're like a true badass, you play like a rap, 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 rock, metalcore combo, which is a very difficult genre to say, apparently. <laughs> but all in all, you're still playing the guitar, right? But now, obviously, capitalism isn't as cool as playing the guitar, no matter how dope and on fleek capital, capitalists say they are. They lie to you about that. Now, capitalism is an economic system that's all about controlling politics and the way of life for, for a lot of people, right? Historically, it has led to more slavery, decreasing quality of life for a lot more people, exploitation, and let's be honest, it's also led to the largest collection of infomercials involving cutting things that don't need to be cut. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this boat in half. <laughs> Why? Why did you? That's not what a boat is for. <laughs> By the way, that is the greatest infomercial of all time. I, I, if you haven't seen the flex tape infomercial, it is the craziest infomercial ever. <laughs> <laughs> but according to Marxist economist and professor emeritus Dr. Richard Wolff, there are three basic types of socialism, right? The first form is where the, the myths surrounding socialism really come from. The government should, here we go, directly take over the enterprises. There shouldn't be private enterprises because those will always be run for the profit of the private owner. If you want the economy to serve everybody, then the agent of everybody, the government, that we all elect, at least in theory, should take over and run the businesses so they behave in the way that's good for everybody and there isn't this perpetual war between a regulating government and private enterprise. And the same argument says we shouldn't allow the market to decide who gets what because a market always delivers whatever is scarce to the people with the most money. It's a institution for works. those who are rich and who stay that way by using the market. So these socialists go further. The government should take over enterprises, literally own and operate the factories, stores, and offices. And instead of the market deciding who gets what, it should be planned in terms of what we want for the society as a whole. These kinds of socialists, after the 1920s, took the name communists to signal that they went further than the other socialists in order to take over through the government the apparatus of the economy. So some people mean by socialism government regulating a private capitalism to make it more humane, to make it less unequal, and other people say no, 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 socialism means for them that the government takes over the enterprise and plans the distribution of output rather than leaving it to the market. And this second group of socialists often, not always, but often takes the name communist to show how they're different from the first group. And in those kinds of examples, the Soviet Union, the People's Republic of China, and for parts of their history, Cuba, Vietnam, and so on are examples. So this is basically what the right wing and the neoliberal political personalities think socialism is, right? They think it's communism and more specifically authoritarian communism. Right. Right yeah. on. The, the idea behind communism hinges on a few making the decision for the masses, which is very similar to a democracy <laughs> run by capitalism, right? The wealthiest in the society are the ones that really write and control legislation. And the but countries the poor in China run the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
And the countries that we associate with communism are primarily China and Russia. And because we're supposed to be polar opposites, right, capitalist countries have a very low opinion of countries like China, despite getting all of our stuff made there. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> But the reality is that China's economy has grown significantly, and they are now an economic superpower because of some of their communist principles. Over the last 25 years, counting from right now, the Chinese economy went from one of the poorest backward to the second one after the United States, fast catching up. Extraordinary. Average annual rate of growth of output in China over the last 25 years, roughly 10%. Average rate of growth over the last 25 years in the United States, 3%. That's not even close. They are catching up because they are doing it faster and better than anyone has done it before. Now, partly they're learning the lessons of countries that went before them, but everybody's trying to do that. China has been number one in world economic growth for the last 20 years out of all the countries on the planet. I mean, whatever you say about them has to be said, taking into account these realities. Let me be as stark as I can imagine. Over the last 20 years, the average real wage in America, the amount of money you get for a job, uh, connected to the prices you have to pay, so it's a measure of how much you can really afford with your average wage, has been stagnant in the United States. We have about the same real wage now that we did 20 years ago. In China, over the same time, the average real wage has quadrupled. I mean, you can play around it, you can pretend it isn't there, but then you're a little bit like the child who's two years old, scared by a dog, puts the fingers in front of their eyes and imagines the dog goes away until they're a little bit more mature and realize you can do that, but the dog is still there. The issue that we the problem is with this is like we really haven't seen a truly communist nation right one where the government and the private enterprises are run by social responsibility to the people and everybody is working towards the common goal of prosperity and happiness for all right and that's not just me saying that that is also a company called now this which is a subsidiary of a neoliberal paper huffington post they are also saying this this might come as a surprise, but in the history of the modern world, there has never been a communist country. While a number of countries have <laughs> described themselves as communist, for example, yeah. China and North Korea, by definition, Amazing. there has never been a true communist country. I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah. I told you. <laughs> it was a big mind up. blown. I know. The issue with communism, though, is that we forget about fear and insecurities and human greed and the manufactured need for power, right? So usually these form of governments turn into communist dictatorships rather than utopias. That's kind of what happens when you deify your leaders. But again, this is no different than capitalist dictatorships, right? America has its fair share of authoritarian forces in effect that are run by capitalists. The use of surveillance technologies, rampant militarism, not just in our military, but also cops, mm -hmm. a, an expanding income divide and consistent media propaganda is just a few of the dictatorial tactics that are used right here in the United States. Now this, the uh, news program that we, just, that we just saw, has taken socialist countries like Venezuela and deemed it a communist dictatorship in its mm. efforts to basically use all forms of media to slander the shit out of socialism. Corruption is rampant in countries like the former USSR, Venezuela, Vietnam, and North Korea, largely due to people in power abusing that power instead of using it to help the society they control and refusing to give up that power to the people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <my> <laughs> yeah. United Let me States. ask you this. What exactly is dictatorial about Nicolas Maduro canceling rents for six months during a pandemic and providing <laughs> food for families? 
right? And Venezuela is known to have one of the most fair and democratic elections in the world, right? Maduro was legally elected out of five different parties. And the only ones that don't agree with this legal election of Nicolas Maduro are the corrupt American capitalist politicians. Those are the only ones. And the question I think we should be asking in America is what did the politicians here do? You know, the ones that slandered Maduro and socialism as a form of dictatorship, what did they do to help the American people? I'd say having two right-wing parties arguing over exactly how much pittance the plebs should be getting is a dictatorship, right? But it is more of a collective dictatorship though. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of them, they got together in a room they had like a blood orgy, you know, it's like a fun, <laughs> like an exciting dictatorship. <laughs> but, but this is why America likes to associate socialism with dictatorships, because the only way America has figured out how to use socialism is with dictatorships. Mm -hmm. And that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on what, when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week.